Okay, in this video, I want to go over the cat muscles that you're responsible for for practical number two. So if we start on the back here, this is our clavo trapezius, right? And then if we move out over the shoulder blade, we've got a nice thin superficial muscle. This is our acromiotrapezius. And then moving back, we have this diamond shaped muscle. This is our spinotrapezius. Then if we move out to the arm, we have our clavodeltoid, which runs down and along the anterior side of the arm. Then we have our acromiodeltoid right there. And then we have the spinodeltoid right there. And then kind of in between those, we have the levator scapula right there. Now, if we go deep to the shoulders, we see this muscle right here on the top of the shoulder blade. This is the supraspinatus muscle. And if we push his elbows together, we can open up right here. Okay, the medial side of the shoulder blade, this is our subscapularis muscle. On either side of the neck, this is our splenius muscle. And we've got this long filament-like muscle which goes from the back of the neck to the back of the shoulder blade. This is our rhomboides capitis muscle. And then we have these several different little filaments right here that are going from the spine to the back of the shoulder blade. These are the rhomboideus muscles right there. Then if we move out to the arm, we have the long head of the triceps brachii and the lateral head of the triceps brachii. Then we have the brachialis muscle right there. Brachialis is in between the clavodeltoid and the lateral head of the triceps brachii. There's your brachialis. Then we have the brachioradialis which is the only muscle on the lower forearm that you need to know, the brachioradialis. Okay, if we move out to the flank right here, we have this large sheet-like muscle. This is our uh, latissimus dorsi. And if I flap that up, I reveal the bottom half of the shoulder blade, and you can see the infraspinatus muscle right there, and then you can see the teres major muscle right there on the, on the inferior side of the shoulder blade. Okay, um, if we now look at the chest, we've got this uh, muscle that goes from the arm, pretty much the elbow area, all the way across the arm or the chest. This is the pecto antebrachialis muscle. And then we have the next one is the pectoralis major muscle, and then the pectoralis minor, and then the xiphi humeralis would be running right along here. And on this cat, it's kind of broken off. Okay, if we go deep, we can now see that we've got this thin superficial muscle on the medial side of the arm. This is the epitrochlearis. So when we peel that back, we see the other side of the long head of the triceps brachii. And then if we dig in here a little bit, we can find the medial head of the triceps brachii right there. And then if we peel this clavodeltoid back, we can see the biceps brachii right there. Okay, then if we move over to, well, let me get this other one real quick. Uh, if we go underneath the pectoralis muscles, we have the serratus ventralis muscles here, and then we have the scalenes right there muscles under there. Then if we move to the neck, this superficial muscle right here, this is our sternomastoid, and if we peel this back a little bit, we can see we've got two muscles which are sitting over top of the trachea, these are called the sternohyoid muscles, and I think of them as they're high on the trachea. Then we've got our sternothyroid muscles on either side of the trachea. Those are the sternothyroid muscles right there. Then if we follow up, we have this muscle in the middle right here. This is called the mylohyoid, and I think of it as M for middle, M for mylohyoid. Then you have these muscles which are forming kind of an upside down V right there. Uh, um, inferior to the jaw, these are the digastric muscles. Then we have this large cheek muscle right here, this is the masseter muscle. Then if we move down to the abdominal muscles, you've got this large superficial abdominal muscle which I've very carefully peeled back. This is the external abdominal oblique. And if you look at the muscle fibers in this, they're running in this direction for the external abdominal oblique. If we peel this back, we can now see we've got another set of abdominal muscles and the fibers are running in this direction. And that's your internal abdominal oblique. 
And then in between those, we have another abdominal muscle. I haven't separated it because it's super thin, but I have peeled back some of the connective tissue so you can see the fibers. These fibers are running in this direction, and this is the transverse abdominus. Those muscle fibers are running in the transverse plane. Then you have this muscle on either side, which is running the length of the abdomen and chest. This is the rectus abdominis. And you can see those muscle fibers are running with the axis of the body. Then if we move down to the legs here, we're going to start with the medial side of the legs. We have this large, thin, superficial muscle. This is the gracilis muscle. So we're going to peel that back. And the most posterior muscle back here, this is our semitendinosus. It's thin like a tendon. Then we have our semimembranosus. It's thick and wide like a, ten like a uh, membrane. Then we have our adductor femoris muscle right there. And then our adductor longus. And then real small muscle in here, the pectineus muscle it's right there. And then if we open up between the abdomen and the leg, you can see the iliopsoas muscle. And the iliopsoas is running with the axis of the body. Okay, if we now move on to the anterior part of the hind leg, I've got this large sheet-like muscle on the anterior surface. This is the sartorius muscle. And so we peel that back, and we can see this muscle also on the anterior side, which is the tensor fasciolata muscle. And it's, con it's connected to this piece of connective tissue that you need to know, which is called the fasciolata. So this is called the fasciolata, and the muscle is called the tensor fasciolata. So if we peel that one back also, it reveals the quadricep muscles. So here is your vastus medialis muscle right there. And then this one, this large one, is your vastus lateralis muscle. In between is the rectus femoris muscle. Okay, now if we move on to the, the uh, lateral side of the hind leg, and I'll put these muscles back so you can see them. So you have the sartorius muscle, you have the tensor fasciolata, and then this muscle that's closer to the spine, this is your gluteus medius muscle. The next one in, in order is your gluteus maximus, and you can see it's just a little thin muscle right there, it comes down. There's your gluteus maximus. Now, next you have a little filament of a muscle, which is much longer. This is your caudofemoralis right there. Then you've got this large muscle out on the whole lateral side of the leg. This is your biceps femoris muscle. Then if we peel some of this back and move out to the lower portion of the hind leg, you have this anterior muscle right here, which is the tibialis anterior, and that's on the anterior surface of the tibia. Next, you have the extensor digitorum longus, and this one is easy because you can follow it down and it, and it moves out to the anterior surface of the, of the foot right there. So when you're identifying these muscles, make sure you follow to where they're going. That's the extensor digitorum longus. The uh, fibularis muscle is going to travel along the lateral side of the ankle. Then you have the tendocalcaneus, which is another piece of connective tissue you need to know. Connected to it, you have two muscles. The first one is the soleus muscle right there. And then the larger is the gastrocnemius, the calf muscle. And along with the tendocalcaneus, the fasciolata, you need to know the linea alba, which is just the little white line of connective tissue on the ventral side. And then you need to know the uh, lumbodorsal fascia, which is kind of like a diamond shape on the back right there. So there's your lumbodorsal. Did I get them all? I think that's it. Okay.